की शादो था I passed out from 12th standard last year in that is in 2020 and I appeared for ISI and CMI exams last year but I couldn't clear it uh, not any of them so uh, I tried one more year and this year I uh, cleared the CMI entrance exam yes, I appeared for ISI BSTAT and CMI uh there are a number of crucial books that help me and the most important ones the most important one is i mean this is the most important book this is test of mathematics at the 10 plus 2 level so matter okay this is i feel that this is this was the most important thing in my preparation and uh basically one uh, if you focus for isi and cma you need to complete the whole book Like all the objective, all the subjective, and there are previous ISI question paper, previous years. Uh, there goes that, and then there are some books for uh, beginners, okay, which are like very important. The, the uh, like excursion in mathematics is there. Then challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics. In excursion, uh, uh, the whole book is important, but in pre-college, uh, yeah, you can only focus. in the combinatorics geometry and trigonometry part uh and uh, and because i mean and for combinatorics i mean yeah i don't think you need very too much theory to know in combinatorics but for subject specific books i would suggest for number theory one should study uh, the uh, elementary number theory by david burton that is a crucial book and for calculus the most important thing uh for uh, uh, you can study uh, introduction to real analysis by sharbat and bartel that book is very good it's it helped me a lot then for complex numbers um, the book that helped me was complex numbers from a to z by t2 andres ku and then there are two other books by t2 mathematical olympiad treasures and challenges and another important book from which i think many of the motivations to the isi questions and cmi both is the book called putnam and beyond okay so many questions either come directly there they don't come directly uh, nowadays but they used to but the most of the motivation is taken from there so these are the i would say the only difference why i couldn't clear last year and i cleared this year is organization i mean this year after i after i failed last year i became became a lot more focused and organized and i i wouldn't say that i had some strict schedule or something but i would make sure that i do not spend ample time to just one problem this happens to many students this happened to me while doing a sum i always used to lose the track of time and when you are you are i mean you can afford to do this till class 11th maximum i wouldn't suggest but that's the maximum time while you can do this but after that you need to say like, stop up and you need to get focused and especially in the last few months like every uh, like everything you do i mean beat any mock test beat any mcq paper you need to always like uh, keep a stopwatch or keep a timer and that really helps because i didn't do that the first time and the second time i did and it did make a difference very honest during rmo times i was completely like it was just passion i mean i the only thing i had for maths was passion and i will i just uh, at that time i just like to do maths and i did it in my own time in my i mean there was no target oriented thinking at that time i mean it's like and i was totally an amateur at that time and yeah it did help i mean only the knowledge part but the preparation part i don't think it helped much only the knowledge part it did because i had to do a lot of geometry and cmi every year you might give geometry question that helps and number theory also but then calculus and other stuff are too much advanced in cmi and isi from 
an early age, I was good. I mean, this is from my RMO days. I was good at number theory and geometry. Okay, I mean, I was I was kind of confident. Like every exam I gave, I would just go for the number theory and geometry problems first. And the part I was weak at was combinatorics. Calculus was average, not very good, not too bad. But I had to focus on combinatorics. So that's something I tried to better. I mean, especially this last year and combinatorics, what helped me is, I mean, basically the theory, I mean, everyone knows everything about the theory. Okay. So there's no point in reading theories and reading different books. The only key was to solving different problems at my level. I mean, I didn't, I did not start solving IMO problems that will not help, but I am, I say CMI standard level problems. I have, I solved many problems. I mean, combinatorics was my main focus this year because I was weak at that. So, uh, and subject wise, number theory is a very wide topic. I mean, you can read all theories, but the problem that comes in exam will not be based on any one of those theories. It will be rather away from all those topics or it will be a mixture of all those topics. So number theory is, it's an unpredictable topic but um, geometry problems are always solvable i mean if you're i mean just i mean i say cmi level geometry they are always solvable i mean they never give a very too tough in more level geometry you can always solve them using basic technique basic theorems like that and combinatorics is also solvable but like i said it was a problem for me so i made that up and number theory is, yes, it's an unpredictable topic. And calculus, it's the most important thing. It's the most scoring thing, scoring topic, I think, in both these exams. So calculus, you, you need to be thorough about it. You need to understand each and everything. Because, I mean, many students have this tendency to overlook calculus or maybe not going into depth, but calculus, it really helps. I mean, I have known students who are just good at calculus and they, my name, maximum, they give the maximum effort in calculus and they clear these exams. First of all, uh, never spend ample time in one problem. I mean, after you've passed class 11th and this is the time you're focusing on something, you have a target, you have a goal to reach, then you should not do that. I mean, I used to do that and it cost me like one year. I used to do that this a lot. I used to take hours and hours. I used to take my own sweet time to solve one problem. You should never do that. Okay. You uh, just make this a habit not to look up solutions too soon. Okay. If you can do the sum, that's well and good. If you can't, then just don't look up. I won't say you put hours, but just don't look up the direct solution. Either you take some hints. But this, if you make this a habit to look at solutions every time, it it becomes a very bad habit like later on. I mean, I did not have this habit, but I know some of them which who had this habit of looking up solutions. You shouldn't look up at solutions like whole. You should look at parts. You should look at hints. And that is only if you're too desperate. You can't solve it at all. Only then. But you need to make this a habit to not look at solutions like whole solutions. Like at least give at least two, three hours. And then if you can't, then move on, then come again. Then take a hint, then try it again. But uh, from young, from a young age, don't make this a habit. These are the don'ts. And the do's will be just, like I said, timing is a very important thing. I mean, uh, if you're already preparing for J's and all, then you don't really have to worry about this because the mock tests you give, they're all time oriented. But if you're not from a GE background, then it, it, I mean, you have to take care of this yourself. Like whatever you do, maybe it's a single sum, maybe it's a very difficult sum. You just need to like put on a stopwatch and it, it's in a big screen that it will help you even more. Like there will be some rush in you, uh, I mean, rush behind you that, okay, I need to stop after this time. And that's all. This is a very important do that you should do, um, especially in the last few months. And another thing is, you need to, I mean, before, I mean, no one really cares about this thing, maximum of them, 
but exam trauma exam anxiety and thing i mean you need to figure this out before you go to the exam you need to like organize how you give the exam which question fill up your first and which is your main priority like i'll always say go for calculus and geometry questions first because mo- you're more likely to solve them if you're if you have the concepts here you you are more than enough likely to solve them so that's my personal opinion it can vary but that's you need to uh, and you need to like do some meditation stuff i did not do meditation specially but i did similar things because i have uh, to the, this anxiety is a problem for men but people don't really cater for these problems and that costs them so this is a must do i played football even this last year like at least twice at least many once or twice a week i used to go i used to play football that's what helped me the, uh, i mean your extracurricular activity can be different but you need you need to give yourself some mental space and for that you need to engage yourself in i mean i think it's a must to do to extracurricular activity yes in chinta uh, the one on one sessions helped me a lot because it helped me realize my uh, like the small weaknesses and strengths i had so i had to i could focus on them i i could strengthen my strengths and i could also look after my weaknesses that one on one session it really helped me and then the mock tests mock tests also helped me mock test i mean it gave me a chance to evaluate myself me a lot and also the the, the teachers are uh, like former or current students from these renowned institutes so their preparation experience and that helped a lot